Hello, this is Rob with the Rob Caudell Show. Thank you again for joining me today. Just want to share with you a couple of thoughts from the Word of God. From Ephesians 1, verses 7 and 8. I'm not going to read the whole verse, just a couple of phrases, but it says, In Christ we have, and then jumping over, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of God's grace, which he lavished upon us. As hard as it is to fathom because of the magnitude of our sin, we have infinite forgiveness in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is for every sin, past, present, and future. Going back to the Old Testament, um, Israel had what was called the Day of Atonement. And this is where there would be a goat that is sacrificed and one that is set free. Before that second one would be set free, um, there would be this symbolic placing of sins um, on the people and this high priest would uh, set his hands on the head of that goat. It was called the scapegoat. And then it would be taken away from the camp and then it would be released and then it would never come back. And if you want to reference that, look at Leviticus 16 verses 7 through 10. Now that word forgiveness um, means to send away. It speaks of removing a debt or pardoning someone. Um, Just like that scapegoat, that's what the Lord Jesus did. He carried away our sins on the cross. In the Lord Jesus, God took our debt and pardoned it. He pardoned our transgressions, and he did that according, looking at verse 8 of Ephesians 1, he did that according to the riches of his grace, and he lavished that upon us. That means we have um, a bottomless bank of forgiveness, an infinite forgiveness, because God's grace, it, it, it lasts forever. It is infinite. You cannot sin beyond God's grace, because where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. We see that in Romans 5.20. And God, as a result of his forgiveness, he is happy to put his grace on us. And that grace is overflowing. And, and, and you, can't, you can't box it up. You can't uh, contain it. Um, you're forgiven for every sin, whether it was in the past, whether it's in the present, whether it's in the future. God's not going to condemn you. Um, and you're not going to be separated from him. We see that in Romans 8. Um, even when we mess up, God doesn't hold our sins against us because the Lord Jesus bore them all so that we might know the the wonderful joy, the amazing peace, the freedom from sin that we no longer have to deal with. And so I, don't misunderstand me here. I'm not talking about now that we have God's grace abounding in our lives, we can sin to our heart's content. No, God's forgiveness provides freedom that enables us to do what's right, not to do what we want. But as a result of that forgiveness, we should be, our hearts should be manifesting thankfulness, gratitude. And that is realized in in our actions where we are also forgiving of others' offenses towards us. We are willing to, um, to carry them away and never speak of them again and never bring them up um, when we are in, when we are assaulted or insulted or mistreated or betrayed or trust is broken, um, we really as Christians need to um, emulate the Lord Jesus Christ in this because that's that's what that's what He did for us and and because He's done that for us, we are all the more accountable to do it for others as well. Um, and so, a couple of things for challenge here: um, we need to thank the Lord for that grace and that forgiveness. And then we need to look for opportunities. And they're not going to be hard to find because people mess up constantly. People hurt us constantly to the point where we, we are so upset with them that we just don't know if we can forgive them. But the, the offense we committed against God was so much greater. And he still gave all. He still went forward and made the difference. And so I just want to encourage you with that. Um, Look for opportunities to extend forgiveness to other people. And before we go, I just want to read a passage real quick here. In um, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. uh, Yeah, and then um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. It says this, and we're going to read a, it's a lengthy passage, but it's, it's really good. It's the parable of the unforgiving servant. 
Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Verse 22, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had that all that he had and payment to be made so the servant fell on his knees imploring him have patience with me and i will pay you everything and out of pity for him the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt but when that same servant went out he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him he began to choke him saying pay what you owe so his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him have patience with me and i will pay you he refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And, you, and, should, you not, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Those are sobering words. How many people have offended us? And any offense anyone commits against us or we commit against others is, is infinitely bigger. Uh, it's infinitely bigger the offense we committed against God with our sin, but he still forgave us. How much more should we forgive? Should we, be, should we be responsible to forgive others for the offenses they commit against us? And that's the point Jesus is making. God gave, forgave an infinitely bigger debt against, that we had against um, ourselves than um, what others might have done to us. And so we're all the more accountable to forgive them. So once again, Thank the Lord for his grace and forgiveness, and then also extend forgiveness to others. This is Rob with The Rob Caudill Show. I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope you have um, a good evening, and we'll uh, see you next time.